I'm Andy Grays. I'm uh, Chief Executive of the Portsmouth Cultural Trust and we run the, the Portsmouth Guildhall. My experience at school, isn't that, that's uh, always an interesting one to ask somebody who's slightly older um, because it's, uh, it's quite a long time ago. I, I had a mixed experience at school, I think like a lot of people. Uh, I, I was quite lucky, my parents uh, sent me to private school when I was younger. Um, uh, and the, the school I went to, which was in a rather nice a town called Jarrah's Cross in Buckinghamshire, I, I struggled a bit. I was, I was in the top set. I did horrible subjects like Latin, which I absolutely detested. Um, and I always remember the Latin teacher would give us Maltesers if we got answers right. And I always had the fewest Maltesers every lesson, which was uh, quite insulting when you think back about it. But I always enjoyed history. And I loved history, and I loved English. Um, I was good at history and English, and um, quite surprisingly, I, I took exams to, to a public school, and I didn't expect to pass. And I did. I didn't go to the public school, because nobody expected me to pass either. <laughs> so I went to a really, really tough secondary school um, in a place called Amersham, which was the best school I ever went to, um, because I actually really liked the people there made lots of friends, and I suppose in your sort of teenage year that was quite formative. So I liked that, and I liked, uh, I liked that school. I did well at that school, and I got good O-levels, which were now GCSEs. And then went to a grammar school called Dr. Chaloner's, which um, was one of the better grammar schools in the country, because that was where I passed into. Uh, and I found that more difficult, because I was with incredibly clever people, all studying for Oxford and Cambridge, which I wasn't. And, um, uh, you know, I did okay. Um, I went to, I got into Leicester, what was, what was, what was in the Polytechnic and now it's the University. Um, and, and I enjoyed my time at Leicester but I only stayed for a year because I just did a foundation course. I was going to do a, a BA in Arts and Administration. I went and got a job. And my first job was with a company um, called uh, Apollo Leisure. And uh, I was lucky I fell into it. And I've been in the same business ever since. Um, when I was at school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. When I kind of got to my mid-teenage years, I started to think about wanting to do something in the, in the music industry because I play guitar and I love music. I absolutely love music. From about the age of 15 or 16, I think what introduced me was listening to Queen, um, the album The Night of the Opera, with some friends. And I liked music all my life, but that, that completely turned my love and passion. Also my parents gave me a bit of pocket money each week and just going down to the local record shop and buying an album as often as I could. And suddenly by the age of 17, 18 I had a huge record collection and with mates was listening to music all the time. So I wanted to do something to do with to do with music. So naturally when I went to Leicester Polytechnic, I didn't do music, I did accountancy. But I do remember whilst I was at Leicester Polytechnic I still wanted to get into the music industry. Um, and I wrote to every single record company to see if they could give me a job. And each one of them, um, well those who responded, there was about three or four, including EMI, who responded and said, why didn't you become an accountant first and come and join us afterwards? But there was never a chance of me becoming an accountant. I did a year of accountancy, didn't like it, um, which upset my father who was an accountant. <laughs> and, uh, and I was very lucky, and as I say, I got this job working for this big leisure company, and it was by luck it was the biggest company, leisure, or theatre company in the country at the time. They owned cinemas, they owned theatres. And, um, and that was the, the start of, um, of my career. Um, I don't think I ever thought that I was going to have a career in theatre management. And as soon as I went into theatre management, uh, I just absolutely loved it. I started off actually in cinema management because I was too young to get theatre management. I worked at Sin Small Cinemas um, in uh, Barrow and Furness, North Wales and Stafford. I only did cinema management for a year. And the, the, this, the company had a little subs, subsidiary which I was working for who threatened to put me into bingo. I thought, God, if I ever worked in bingo, I'm, gonna, I'm leaving. And uh, the head office of the parent company heard about this. And they said, you know, there's no way you're working in bingo, mate. And got me to become an assistant manager in, in a fantastic venue in Liverpool called the, the Empire Theatre Liverpool, which if anybody knows Liverpool, it's Liverpool's main theatre, 2,300 seats, and you kind of, it's a bit like the Guild Hall, when you approach it you just go wow, this was 20, I think it was 20, 21 at the time, I remember kind of getting off the station in Liverpool and going to, looking at the Empire Theatre, 
and then looking at the, looking at what I was going to be doing, and we had the Iron Maiden in concert in Crystal Burr and um, fantastic groups. We had brilliant shows. Jason with his multi tenant kind of drink out. We had great opera and ballet companies. I couldn't believe it. Uh, what I actually found out was it was extremely hard work, um, and and that was good. In terms of my present job, what I've been doing, what I've been doing for almost over thirty years now, one way or another. Um, I mis by mistake, and I say it was a mistake because I didn't know I was doing this. I ended up working for a local authority for about four years in Luton. I applied to become creative director of, a, of an art centre without realising it was run by the, the council in Luton and I became the head of arts as well. And eventually the local authority in Luton set up what's called a cultural trust and they put all their arts, museums and libraries into a, an independent organisation for it to fend for itself and I was one of the original directors of this trust back in 2008. Well, I worked for this trust for four years as director of arts and I was kind of looking out to see what other opportunities there were around. And I saw the opportunity of, of chief executive of the Portsmouth Cultural Trust. And it seemed to bring for, to me two key fundamental parts of my career together. One was working for an independent charity and organisation within a vibrant community. And the other one was working in a big building, which goes back to my early days at the Liverpool Empire and other venues after that. And I loved it. So I, I got this job and I've been doing this job uh, for four years. Um, my, my roles and my responsibilities, well, um, I do joke that I don't do an awful lot and everybody else does an awful lot around me. And maybe there's an element where you're cheap exactly if that's, if that's a bit true. But ultimately, there's an awful lot of... Um, I think as chief executive, you've got, to, you've got to understand the direction of the business. You've got to know the direction of travel and the strategy of how you're going to get there. Your main task is the business plan and to then make the business plan work. And that means working with colleagues to ensure they understand how that kind of works for you and for them and for the company because we're all effectively officers of the organisation and we report to a board of trustees. Um, so I do a lot of work around business planning. I also get heavily involved in programming the venue. That's something I, I suppose over the last 20 years I've almost determined, it, you know, I've almost just become a programmer by nature of, of arts programmes, certainly when I ran an arts centre. Um, that was one of my key jobs and roles. These days it's a bit easier. I can just let the promoters approach me and uh, hire the venue, which they do. And I can also negotiate with them the deals, which is what, what I do and um, also encourage other art forms to come into the venue. So we have exhibitions and we have um, um, a lot of other things that happen within the Guildhall which we've developed by conferencing over the last four years. Um, what are my ambitions? Well, my, my big ambition is that this venue becomes one of um, the country's great concert halls and I think we're on the way to achieving that. There's a lot of work we have to do. We want to refurbish the Guildhall but um, the, the most important thing is to do what you do as well as you can. And I think we put on really good concerts here. And I think we put on um, a great front of house operation and we make sure the customer and the client feels welcome and that's what we have to do and that's what we should do. I also think it's about reaching out into the community and doing more. So we have a very good learning and participation programme which I'm, I'm very proud of. What did I wish I knew when I was younger is an interesting question because I, um, I, I always remember I, when I first went into theatre management I'd, been, I'd probably worked around three or four theatres and after two years I thought I knew it all which people who know me won't find surprising at all so I thought I knew it all I remember saying to this 60 year old theatre manager work, I was working doing summer season in a place called Scarborough which if anybody's been to you know, it's a very interesting resort in Yorkshire. And I did summer season there for two years. And I said to him one evening, I said, you know, he had to go at me about something. I said, look, you know, I've been doing this for two years and I know as much as I'm ever going to learn. And that was the biggest mistake I ever made. That was the biggest thing I ever said which was wrong. If after two years you think you know everything about the industry, you know nothing. And I would say to my younger self, you know absolutely nothing. If you get that, if you think... If you know what you've got, a, you've got ahead of you, you're quite frightened you over the next 20, 30 years of your working life. But what is really important is to, to listen to the people who know and to listen to their experience and their expertise. Somebody said to me when I was uh, from my very first company, who was the operations director, a guy called Sam, and Sam said to me, what you do is you take the best bits of everybody who works around you or you work for them, all the stuff that you really like about them, all the stuff that they do well, and that's what you focus on. 
and that's what you try to become. And all the rubbish that they they have around them, whatever that might be, you discard that. And I, and I think that's a really important point for any young person coming into the business. You will be um, affected by people you work for and by people you work with. And I think you'll also find that um, there are things that you kind of think, well, they don't, they, that's not the way to do things. Um, you can imagine working in the entertainment industry and the arts, there are things that people do uh, around you which maybe aren't strictly what, uh, certainly many years ago, what people should do. I remember ye many years ago, a lot of people used to go to the pub during the day uh, and work in the evenings in the theatre. And it used to, amaze, used to amaze me that they could get away with it. Um, these days, you, it doesn't work. You can't have that in the industry anymore. But 20, 30 years ago, everybody was everybody working backstage and half the front of the house team would be in the pubs in the afternoon and then go and work a show in the evenings. So there are all sorts of things that, were, were, that you, you, you want to say to your younger self and you say to others who you know, want to learn from you as to what to do best. In terms of um, top tips for getting on in the world, I, I honestly think that um, you've got to be true to yourself, true to what you want to do and not compromise. I think strength of, of you as a person is, is really, really important. Whatever you want to do, don't let anybody sort of try to push you into an area that you don't want to go into. I think you absolutely got to learn from your um, the people around you and people older than you. I also think you've got to be really clear not to, to follow a path which you think is potentially wrong and to, to listen to that inner self, that inner sort of voice within you which tells you whether it's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. And most importantly, you've got to enjoy what you do. Um, I don't think anybody works and comes to work unless, uh, and gives of themselves properly unless they absolutely enjoy what they do in the workplace. And I also think it's important if you work and having the people working for you, that you try to make it as enjoyable as is possible.